Hi, everybody. My name is Will Kostakis, young adult author and proud ambassador for Australia Reads. Thanks so much for joining us for this very special virtual celebration of all things YA. In the spirit of reconciliation, Australia Reads acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. Australia Reads is a nationwide initiative to encourage people of all ages, in particular young adults, to discover the joy of reading. Don't forget, the program will culminate in the Australian Reading Hour on Thursday, 12th of November. So pick up a book for an hour at any time that day and get reading. This year, teenagers have turned to reading more than ever. A good book can be an escape, a comfort and company in challenging times. Stories are bridges that connect us all, and we'll be celebrating those connections today. I'll now hand over to Danielle Binks, who will reveal what's in store for you today. Hi, Danielle. Thanks, Will. This year, we're celebrating Australia Reads with a special virtual event. Joining Will and me will be Garth Nix, Amy Kaufman, Rawa Aja, Kath Moore, Alex Dyson, and Lisa Fuller. I know some authors who write to capture moments in their lives and others who relish escaping to far off worlds. What inspires you to write? What inspires me to write, I think, is primarily a desire to tell stories. Um, I love to tell stories. Possibly if I wasn't an author, I might be in jail as a confidence trickster wanting to, uh, to make up stories. I, I like people to believe the stories that I invent. I have these amazing memories as a kid of reading and I would read way past when I was meant to. This feeling of, of slipping away to a secret world and you know that tingle that you get when you pick up a book and I still get that as a grown up now. I still get that moment when I'm about to head into a story and I know it's gonna be really good. Something that inspires me to write a little bit would be my younger self, you know, growing up, you don't really know what you're doing, you don't know what's going on, but as you get older, you learn things. And although I can't talk to my younger self, potentially I can talk to younger people who might be like me and, you know, trying to figure things out. And so that's another thing that uh, really inspires me to put pen to paper. My inspiration to write was the lack of reading and the fact that I actually disliked uh, reading and writing until I was, believe it or not, 15 years old. And my English teacher gave me a book called Looking for Brandy. So I read it and for the first time in my life, I realized it wasn't the lack of reading um, that I sort of was, or the fact that I thought that reading was boring. It was actually because I couldn't connect with the book. And once I found a book that I connected with, I thought I mattered. So I thought to myself, okay, hang on a sec. What if I create a book, just like what Luki Fyla Brandy did for me, and that they could sort of escape from sometimes the horrors of the world. I'm inspired by other stories. I love reading. Uh, I love films. I love television. I love, I love the theatre. Uh, all the means of telling stories that, that we've invented. When you're a young adult, you're moving from one state of being to another. And I think that's really interesting territory to mine. From a writer's point of view, um, I think it opens up uh, creative possibilities. You know, a, a story gives you an opportunity to, to go into other people's lives and to investigate things that will never be a part of your life. And it helps you figure out what you think about things. I don't think writing's ever been a choice for me, to be honest. Um, Mum says that before I even knew my alphabet, I would write down what I thought would be letters, and then I'd sit down and I'd tell her what the story was. Being Aboriginal, storytelling's in our blood. It's in everything. That's how we learn. That's how we teach the kids. And um, so, yeah, I've just always loved everything to do with books and story. And I think I'm inspired to write because um, I want to reach as many people as I can and to be part of multiple ongoing conversations. For me, there is opportunities for stories everywhere and it gets to the point where I absorb too much to be able to then output uh, into my writing. But for me, I see inspiration everywhere. Writing and reading bridges the gap between being or feeling lost and found, right and wrong, alone and together. And I'm inspired 
by the chance to connect to people I might not otherwise get to know if it hadn't been for, for my writing. Inspiration is such a key part of the YA community and it is exactly that. It is a community who uplifts one another, not just published authors but emerging authors and our readers as well. We really like to stay interconnected and I think by virtue of writing for young people, we have to go to where young people are, which is majority online, uh, especially when you can't go and visit them in schools like we normally would as authors. That connectivity has been really, really key and the discussions based around books thanks to that connection and that community building has been really wonderful. Getting inspired is one thing, but then how do you go about actually writing that book? Like most writers, I'm always fascinated by how other writers write their books. It's endlessly fascinating. I mean, every book of mine that you read probably got written a little bit in an airport lounge and, you know, a little bit while I was waiting to meet my friends. And, and some of it even got written a little bit at my desk in my office. A way I write is to try and go somewhere unique, somewhere different, and uh, sit somewhere with maybe a nice view or, or a cosy room and uh, try and get as many words as I can on the paper. For many years, I actually wrote uh, longhand first. I would write in a black and red notebook like this one, and I would write, uh, my, I'd write my prose longhand like that, and I'd write a chapter at a time longhand, and then I would type it up when I got the opportunity. I can be anywhere to write because the thing is, you can always edit it later. I spend a lot of time letting characters just appear in my head and after a while I let them walk around, I watch them and I, I try to figure out what they're up to and what they're afraid of and what their conflicts are. I do a lot of talking to myself. I do a lot of talking out scenes. Something about writing conversations just doesn't come across as natural on the page. You have to talk it out. And I especially write out arguments between my characters. I think that's mostly why writers are fairly reclusive is because I think every writer does that and they want the opportunity to do that in privacy, which is completely understandable. Um, the first book that I wrote when it drops, I started writing it whilst I was on a train trip from Beijing in China to Moscow in Russia, the Trans-Siberian Express. Having a different environment away from your normal world can really open up something within you that really helps you get some words out and uh, come up with something. Some writers I think are quite rigid with their schedules and their output, but I often find that I'm writing while I'm doing the dishes or going shopping and I'm, I'm letting that, that creative mind figure things out. Before I even start writing, I'm thinking about my characters and the journeys I want them to go on. And then I'm actually writing down each step of that journey onto a separate post-it note. And then so back when I had hardwood floors, I would place them down on the floor and I would see my novel just sprawl out in front of me. And then <laughs> there was the awkward sort of uh, editing process where I'd move things around and try to find the best way for the whole story to work together as a unit. I'm just trying to, you know, stick with what I know works for me, which is, you know, big blocks of time set aside, um, going for walks to just try and keep myself engaged and remember that, you know, just sitting slavishly at a desk. Um, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not a good thing. And sometimes I just need to get away and catch up with people and actually remember, you know, that there is life away from my desk. The process in which I write is always got to do with my 39 uh, members of my large Lebanese family. And so for me, it's really uh, sitting down and observing my family members, their mannerisms, their gestures, the way they speak to each other, uh, but also to sort of bring to life Western Sydney and the characters um, and the stories uh, in Western Sydney. We all know what reading means to each of us. And we thought it would be great to get the author's thoughts on just how important reading is. I really think reading is super important because you learn so much as you go. It could be facts about the world, uh, but it all could also be you can learn to imagine. You can learn to, you know, take your, yourself to different areas and, uh, yeah, experience the world through someone else's eyes. Reading is, you know, to borrow a famous phrase from a famous book, how you walk a mile in someone else's shoes. You know, reading is how you figure out people who are different from you. It's how you figure out 
you know, what you think about things. You know, you encounter stuff and you agree with it or you don't, or, you know, you can imagine it being a part of your life or you can't. I personally think the reason that we read is to just connect. That's the whole point of being human, right? And that's distilled in storytelling. It's why we pass down stories for generations. And I think at the end of the day, the really, the greatest gift of reading is the ability to stretch and improve our own empathy for other people. I know the benefits of reading. I know that the more I read, the more my speech improves, the more all my vocabulary expands, the more uh, I find it easier to write and to write creatively. Reading is important because it's fun because we get to escape into stories, especially during challenging times like 2020. Reading has always been one of the most important things in my life, I think. It was escape when I needed it. It was some truth um, that I sorely needed to hear. It was, um, you know, that safe place for me always as a kid. I think reading a wide variety of books is important because it helps us understand that life is an extraordinary experience. See yourself in books and being able to see people going through what you're going through so you don't feel so alone. Um, and it just helps you also get away from your own concerns and troubles, not even if you're not actually being made more empathetic. Uh, I think it's helpful to get out of your own head and go live somewhere else for a while. Reading does all of those things. So reading is important because I think we're all storytellers and it's a fundamental part of who we are. I think reading can give you confidence either by educating yourself or seizing the moment, taking control of the here and now by stepping into unfamiliar territory. I think um, reading is important because it helps us find the beautiful details in life and elevates them beyond the everyday to something special or something magical. When I read uh, Does My Head Look Bing in This or books like Looking for Anna Brandy, I found myself and I didn't feel second best. I didn't feel as though I didn't matter because my story was worth telling. Reading uh, to me took me to places that I never thought I'd ever experience and meet people I never thought I'd ever have um, sort of worldly relationships with. Um, so reading to me uh, just made me feel safe and made me feel as though I belong. Uh, if you find the right book for you, uh, it, it can do tremendous things for you. It can, it can make you feel things, it can make you think things, uh, it can even lead you to writing things yourself. Who knows? And now, Dr. Helena Popovic is going to share some amazing reading statistics. Hello, I'm Dr. Helena Popovic. I help people boost their brain and turn stress into success. And reading fits so many bills in terms of keeping our brain and body healthy. My dad always used to say, never put off until tomorrow what you can read today. And reading really does sharpen our thinking. It helps us become more creative. When we read something outside our own field of expertise, it improves our problem solving skills and it helps to prevent dementia throughout life because it, it keeps our, our language sharp and it also connects us. And, and you know, I've been mem member of book club through the years and even with COVID, we can still connect through what we're reading and what we're learning. I have to make time to read in order for my sanity to be completely looked after. Especially in this pandemic and during isolation, it can be really stressful and I find a way to de-stress and sort of alter the state of my mind. I sort of pick up any book and I just read. Very recently, you know, in lockdown, I've been getting a little bit um, frustrated and pent up with everything that's going on. And so I found myself turning off my phone and uh, sitting down with a book and uh, getting a little drink for myself. And I got some olives and yeah, just took an hour and, and read a book. I am a better person when I have other people's stories in my head. So I do try as much as possible to put the screen away and find a pocket of sunshine outside and just sit there and let the pages turn for as long as I can before life brings me back inside. I recently got really sick actually. <laughs> And surprisingly, it was a good thing because I, I picked up a whole heap of um, paranormal romance I'd been, just, just fun reading, something I could read while feeling sick. To see my little nephew, Harry, hi Harry, have him reading with me and when he gets to go and choose his favourite story for Auntie Dan to read to him, 
that just reignites the passion completely. He's a really, really big fan of Where the Wild Things Are by, by Maurice Sendak. And that just makes me want to put on all the voices and do all the actions and make sure he's not too afraid that he loves it again. So definitely reading picture books. Go back and read picture books, short stories and poetry. You can't go wrong with those three. I go to bed and I plug my phone in on the other side of the room and I set myself a challenge of reading a certain number of pages in a book before I go to bed. And some nights I'll set myself an even more intense challenge and say, okay, an extra chapter than what I read last night. So I've got my weekends, I've got my nights. I'm, I'm actually really turned off by TV right now. So I'm usually off in the room with a good book and trying to unplug at the moment. Often some people choose to do this while reading. I just have a little book in the toilet there. And so uh, when you're dropping past, you know, they're in there for a little while, you can read a chapter. And so that's a good place to uh, get a bit of time to yourself to read as well without anyone disturbing you. What I do is I go to bed half an hour earlier than I plan to go to sleep. And my brain just knows it's going to read a book that time. I need to read to ground myself in the world. So I make a point of having about three different books on the go. For a healthy reading diet, I think that's really important and just finding a pocket in the day that I can claim for myself. You have to have a plan to read is what I'm saying. You can't just hope that a book, a book at a moment come to you. You've got to have a plan because it's so important to do. I normally always have a couple of books on the go and I will sort of flip flop between them depending on, on my mood. So for me, uh, it's probably more about how do I find time to do other things. P part of how you equip yourself to be a writer is by reading. So uh, I can always claim that if I'm curled up on a, on a couch reading a novel that I, I am in fact hard at work. I think the quietness and solitude of reading is really like a cup of tea and bicky for the soul. It just brings everything back into the here and now. Over the years, it's been important to include regional Australia and every year we go to remote Australia with our Australia Reads authors and ambassadors. Yetman, Mount Gambia, and this year we visited the kids at Broken Hill. We've come to Broken Hill today to encourage kids from all over Australia to read as part of Australia Reads. We get inspired usually by things that are happening all around us and we think of an idea and this one was all about global warming. So me and my husband wrote a story about it and then he went away and wrote the words and as the illustrator, I worked it up because I do a lot of my illustrating on the computer. This book is called The Polar Bear in Sydney Harbour. Already, just talking about stories, we've discovered really intimate things about ourselves, haven't we? I think I'll call you Rodney. What do you think guys, good name for a polar bear? The first time I read a book at nine years old and there was a girl, Anne, from Anne of Green Gables and she felt like I did about so many things. After his long journey, Rodney's tummy was rumbling. Each winter the villagers collected their wood from the old forest nearby. It was a big forest and we're a small village, so we always imagined there'd be plenty of wood from the fringes. The books that, are, that you might know best are the Tashi books. So the first book I did was called Aussie Legends Alphabet. Has anyone ever seen this book before? I just want to keep reading. I want to have a book with me always so that I can keep learning about what goes on inside people. As the sun set on the day, Hannah and Rodney returned home feeling defeated. We told each other our names and we wandered over to the barred window. Standing on tiptoe, we could see a bit of footpath. He seemed to like it very much. Oh, look at Rodney. He's going home. Can you see him? Be quiet for a moment. I'm thinking. And that's his way out, is when he goes quiet for a moment and he has to think. And don't forget, for Australia Reads, we're all going to pick up a book for just one hour. You can pick up my book. <laughs> you can book up any book you want. How long does it take you to come up with ideas and write the whole book? You know, falling in love with an idea, it's just the most wonderful feeling. So from that moment until doing many, many drafts. So about that, it takes about a month for that. Thank you. Well, thank you for those great questions too. 
We all know how important reading is and the doors that literacy opens. In remote Indigenous communities across the country, reading is transforming lives. When children come to our school here at Irkala, they come with their own knowledge, they come speaking their own language, and they come with what values they have. I speak three languages. For children who have Aboriginal language as their first language, to be able to see it in a book is just magical, and it's a really special part of um, our language regenerating and regrowing for all people to be able to speak. To have that bridging from one language to another is very special. How many languages do you guys speak? Um, four, four? five. You, can you tell me which ones you speak? Yamamara, Duali, Mamara, and Garidari. And Yulbija. Two. Which ones are they? Garidari and Yamamara. Our languages are important to us. They inform us of everything that's universal about who we are as Indigenous peoples of this country. We, we all need to see our lives reflected in books and for them to be able to read about their lives is wonderful. I love with the Indigenous Literacy Foundation where we get to really show the importance of language and culture in storytelling. Obviously, as an Indigenous person from the Gumaroi Nualiai communities, we've been telling stories since time again. And that's where you really have those cherishing moments that come from the heart. And so that's why it's really important to have books in their own language so that mothers can teach their children to read in their own languages. When I was writing my book, My Culture and Me, I was thinking of that pride in my community and that pride that I have for my culture. So it's really, really important that we as a foundation can get this opportunity to get into communities so that kids can pick up books with their own language in it, with their own culture in there. To the parents, I suggest that um, you read your kid in both languages. Look, I'd be understating it if I said that 2020 hadn't put us all through the ringer. But books have been a constant comfort and a way for us to break out from those four walls and visit far off lands. How many of you have felt isolated at some point this year? How good is it knowing that just picking up a book can be a remedy, surrounding you with new and old friends and launching adventures, big and small? I think for me, reading during ISO and, and during this year and, you know, for, for a little bit longer I know as well, and during all the other hard times that I've had in my life, reading is a, a way that you get to switch off, you know, you, you, know, you, you should never think, oh, I, I have to read now because it's good for me, you should think I get to read now. Yeah, during this lockdown time, I, I've found reading to be a, a really great way of connecting with people. Um, yeah, just by reading some words on a page, you can take yourself and suddenly be somewhere else. So yeah, I think it's a really great way to, to get through these times when we're not, a, not able to socialize, socialize as much as we used to. I think you are never alone when you're with a book. Really getting to know and to travel with characters can help you feel that life is a little bit bigger than the confines of personal circumstance. I'm a huge fan of rereading my favorite novels. And a big part of that are the people in those books. Uh, I do feel when I've read particularly an old favourite or a new book where I really connect with the characters, that I kind of have been visiting friends. It, it gives some of that same experience. It's not the same, but I think it does help with those, those feelings of, of isolation. Melbourne's Yarra Plenty Regional Libraries, they went through their databases and they found every single patron of their library who was over the age of 70, 8,000 patrons, they reached out to every single one of them and just gave them a phone call to say, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Can we help you? That's books community in, in a nutshell, I think. We care about people and books really do bring us together. And we've been reminded of that constantly throughout this really troublesome time. I always feel enormously complimented when people tell me that they, they met through uh, you know, loving one of my books and talking about it. But I think books are always connecting people and you know, online, uh, in person, that is another great advantage of reading, uh, another great advantage of books. 
right now, I think we all need positivity. So I personally, I look for books that can provide that experience. I'm trying to read things that I know my friends have so I can talk about those books with them. I think um, reading is a really great way to connect to others in isolation. The thing about reading is it's a bridge and whether it means we are connecting ourselves with the author who wrote a text or we are sharing a reading experience with others who are reading the same book at the same time just separated by distance. Reading can bridge the gap between us and I think in a time when we are quite isolated I think that is pretty important. Because we can't catch up with friends and we can't you know, just see people sometimes on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, reading can help you bridge that gap, um, but it can also be a space where you can share with people about what you're reading. You know, there's quite a few people I know who are starting um, book clubs just for the excuse to get on and talk about whatever they're reading together and to be able to share that, I think is a really good thing. Uh, reading can really help uh, you relax and de-stress and find yourself and so sometimes you just need to disconnect from the real world and pick up a book and connect with uh, those characters and feel a sense of belonging and a sense of community. We were overwhelmed by the number of questions you sent in and would have loved to answer them all but given this isn't a 10-hour event we've selected a handful to answer for you right now. How much is my story based on life experiences? Okay, so a little bit of a spoiler, but not really. The year the maps changed, it's set in 1999 and my character is 11 going on 12 because so was I in 1999. I was also 11 going on 12. And uh, my book deals with real events that happened in 1999 called Operation Safe Haven. And that actually happened in eight different locations around Australia including on the Mornington Peninsula where I grew up, where I live now, and where one of those locations was set. So this book is a lot based on my childhood actually and my remembering these events from 1999, which is a very long time ago and it does make my book historic fiction, which also makes me want to cry a little bit uh, because I am old now. But yes, it is based on memories of my childhood. How do you know what will make a good story? I, it's very instinctual. And the only way I can describe it is kind of like you have a great big puzzle in front of you and you get the two corner pieces down and you just feel a sense of accomplishment. You may have a thousand pieces still to go, but if you figured out those two, you think, cool, I've got something started here. Something is fitting and locking into place and I'm liking the look and feel of it. Let's keep going. And I mean, in my case, Let's Keep Going took five years to finish my first book. But getting those corner pieces down, that was just the start. Uh, and you know, you always need to start somewhere. So same philosophy as a puzzle, start with two pieces that lock together and see where it takes you. I really relate to this question. Kids who are not motivated to read, anyone who's not motivated to read, my number one piece of advice would be don't give up. There is going to be the right genre, the right book, the right author out there for you, even the right form. And to people who are not motivated to read, that can be students, kids, as well as adults. Hi, I've been unmotivated to read, especially in 2020 at times. I would just ask you though, do you like music? And if the answer is yes, which I suspect it is, try poetry, try poetry. Really, you can read a poem a night and just see what resonates with you. Also, look up some slam poets on YouTube and get inspired that way. Some of my favourite poets and verse novels would be uh, Kate Tempest. I also love the Australian very young slam poet champion, uh, Solly Raphael, whose books are Limelight and Spotlight. I love the poets Inez Smith, Rupa Kapoor. I love the uh, Indigenous Australian verse novel, Sister Heart by Sally Morgan. I also love the US verse novel, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I also love a book that came out this year, a verse novel called Living on Stolen Land by Amberlynn Quay Mulliner. Try poetry, try anything, but start with poetry. How wonderful has it been to spend quality time with some of Australia's greatest young adult authors? We are incredibly grateful for their participation and for their wise words. So pick up a book at any time on Thursday, the 12th of November for Australian Reading Hour and challenge yourself to make time for reading now and into the future.
stay safe and keep being remarkable.